Hello, my name is Samuel Lasanti, and I'm going to be giving my persuasive speech about a policy topic. Recently in America, over the past decade or so, Americans have grown much more concerned about the role of government in society. Where, while it used to be a topic only considered suitable for eggheads and policy wonks to discuss, now everyday average Americans are talking about things such as federalism, constitutional conventions, and the autonomy of the states. This represents a growing debate about the proper role of government in society. Should government be large and have large powers that affect many areas of our lives? Or should government be small and restrained to several, um, several duties that were originally given to it by the Founding Fathers, such as national defense? This debate is playing out currently in the discussion about congressional term limits. Congressional term limits highlight the divide in Americans between those who support big government and those who support a smaller form of government. Those who support a larger form of government are opposed to term limits because they believe it would hinder the government's ability to effectively bring about reform in society. However, proponents of congressional term limits say that enacting such limitations on how long a congressman or woman can serve in office would actually improve society by shrinking the role of government and causing people to uh, increase their sense of freedom. I'll be talking about why congressional term limits are a necessary reform that needs to be implemented in our government today. I'll be looking at two major arguments as to how congressional term limits will improve our nation. Then I'll consider an argument from opponents of congressional term limits. So the first argument I'm going to examine is that of how term limits will reduce corruption and legislative gridlock. Currently, elected officials can serve for as long as they want to, as long as they are re-elected. Unfortunately, this indefinite position of power makes them more susceptible to corruption and showing favoritism to special interest groups. In a study conducted by Jed Babin, a political expert, he found that the longer a lawmaker is in office, the more likely he or she is to become corrupt. In addition, the lack of term limits can cause incumbents to grow tone deaf to the needs of their constituents. Mike Gallagher, a representative from Wisconsin, wrote for The Hill in 2017 that the lack of term limits can allow incumbents in Congress to coast to re-election even if Congress itself isn't doing its job simply because of their power as an incumbent and the difficulty it is to mount a challenge to an incumbent legislator. However, term limits will solve these problems of congressional inaction and corruption in our legislative branch. Representative Ron DeSantis from Florida, who's a co-sponsor of a bill supporting congressional term limits, said, quote, term limits are the first step towards reforming Capitol Hill eliminating the political elites and infusing Washington with new blood will restore the citizen legislature that our founding fathers envisioned. The American people have called for increased accountability and we must deliver." Unquote. His co-sponsor, Senator Ted Cruz, concurred saying, it is well past time to put an end to the cronyism and deceit that has transformed Washington into a graveyard of good intentions. We see that uh, congressional term limits will have a positive impact on corruption, as seen in a study conducted by Joshua Norberg and Matthew Newton, in which they found that states that enacted congressional term limits for their legislatures saw a decrease in contributions from special interest groups to lawmakers. Term limits will decrease the strength of special interest groups in Washington, helping lawmakers to focus more on the needs of their constituents and not on their political supporters. Now let's look at, at the second major argument in, as to why congressional term limits are needed. Congressional term limits will restore the traditional and more appropriate concept of lawmakers as citizen servants and not career politicians. Term limits will remind elected officials that their job is to serve the people, not themselves. With long terms of service, lawmakers have grown used to the perks that come with the job. Tom Mulkin, a candidate for a South Carolina House of Representatives seat, has said that term limits will help congressional lawmakers not grow too attached to the benefits of power. 
enacting term limits will bring about a change in the opinion as to the proper role of legislative lawmakers. Lawmakers were meant to be temporary citizens who focused on serving the needs of their constituents and their nation, not fulfilling their own personal desires and giving kickbacks to people who supported them during the general elections. Representative Raul Labrador from Idaho said in the Daily Caller in 2017, the Founding Fathers expected elected officials to serve temporarily and return to their communities. Term limits will result in, quote, a reinvigorated Congress filled with members ready to serve and prepared to go home to live with the consequences of their actions. As we can see, congressional term limits will solve the problems of a tone-deaf and increasingly corrupt uh, legislature. In addition, it will bring about a reformation in the opinions and ideas of Americans about the proper role that legislators should play in society. However, there is currently a debate about these term limits, so let's examine some of the arguments of opponents of congressional term limits. Stanley M. Caress, a professor of political science at the University of West Georgia, has argued that term limits will actually cause lawmakers to become more beholden to special interest groups for both education and direction about policy matters. He says that because legislators will have less time in office, they won't be able to become as familiar and educated with the complex policy issues that they're dealing with. And because of this, they'll look to special interest groups to educate them and to help them make important decisions. This would actually go against the purpose of term limits, as opponents of congressional term limits argue. However, when we look to actual examples from the states, we see that fears about an increased strength of special interest groups are largely unfounded. For instance, Dan Walters, a Sacramento Bee columnist who has covered California politics for more than 40 years, wrote about when California enacted congressional term limits. He said that at once congressional term limits were enacted for state legislatures, there was no large scale increase in the power of lobbyists or special interest groups in California's legislature. In addition, former New Mexico Governor Gary Johnson has written about the positive experience he had with legislative term limits during his time as governor of New Mexico. He wrote in the Washington Times in 2016, quote, governing with term limits, I saw politicians do the right things for the right reasons, instead of whatever it took to get reelected. So in these examples, we see that the arguments that special interest groups will actually become stronger are largely disproven by the facts. This exemplifies a part to whole fallacy that opponents of congressional term limits are largely guilty of. They are looking at certain states and isolated instances of potentially strengthening special interest groups and lobbyists and uh, extrapolating those minor results to the nation as a whole. However, as we see, when we consider the larger field of data and examples, we see that term limits do not lead to increased strength of lobbyists and congressional term limits. So what can you do to bring about change in the nation? There are several things that you as a citizen can do to bring about increased ethic, um, ethical behavior in Congress and decreased legislative gridlock. First off, you can contact your local representatives and your senators and talk to them about why term limits are needed. If enough people speak up as to why congressional term limits are needed, then our elected officials will have to respond to us as our voice is being heard. The second thing that you can do to, in order to bring about this change is support congressional term limits by supporting groups that advocate for them. There are numerous groups out there that conduct advocacy for enacting congressional term limits. By supporting these groups, we can um, make and we can multiply our strength in numbers and power and make our voices heard on the national level. And then the third and final thing that you can do is vote for ethical, selfless lawmakers who will put the needs of their constituents and the nation first. While congressional term limits may not exist currently, we can begin to foster an attitude of ethical behavior and serving one's constituents rather than one's own needs by electing officials who will seek to do just these things. If this current pattern of governmental corruption 
and legislative gridlock continues, people will grow increasingly frustrated with their government and possibly seek more radical alternatives that they believe will address this problem. Term limits will stop this alienation of voters by bringing power back into the hands of the citizens and by bringing power down to the local level rather than ceding control of our nation to those in Washington who are increasingly becoming unaccountable due to the lack of congressional term limits. By limiting how long our legislators can serve in office, we can encourage ethical behavior while decreasing legislative gridlock. In addition, we will help to reform Americans' understanding of the true role that both the legislature and government in general should play in our society.